What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com, and this is the weekly YouTube live stream where we take a look at your apps, have an awesome guest on, and really answer some questions from the audience as well as trying to sort of train you, helping you guys grow your app downloads and more importantly, your revenues. And one of the main things that's tied to your revenues is going to be app engagement. And today's guest, his name is William Lombowski, and he is the co-founder and developer of an app you got to check out. It's called Wager Lab. Wager Lab, one word, Wager Lab, or go to wagerlabapp.com, I think, William. Is that what it was? Uh, Wagerlab.app. Dot app. Okay. I knew there was an app in there. So Wager App wagerlab.app. It is all linked up in the description. And that's why we do that. But he three X his engagement without really updating his build. So how do you do that? So William, give us a sneak peek. How are, what are the tools, the main tools that you're using? Tell us a little about wager lab, but what are the main tools you're using to really update content, make your app more engaging? Yeah. Uh, so Kind of in a nutshell, Wager Lab is a, a mobile app for social sports betting. So the idea is you can browse odds on a bunch of different sports and then uh, pick a bet, propose that bet to your friend, and then the app will uh, track the results of, of your bet with your friend. And so um, what one of the issues that, that way back kind of at the beginning of development we found was that... Um, users weren't actually placing bets at a very high percentage when mm -hmm. uh, they started the session. Uh, and so what we ended up doing um, was creating some sort of some in-app content um, that could be updated without us having to update the code of the app um, and then running a bunch of A-B tests. And so getting back to your question on the, the tooling we used there, um, we use Firebase really for tons of different things. Uh, but one of the big things there that we use Firebase for is uh, A-B testing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a tool called Retool to help us actually manage um, our in-app content. And I can go in a little bit more detail too on either let's of those tools if you'd like. Yeah, I mean, let's let's talk about Retool. I think most people know about Firebase, but is this the, yeah, yeah I'm going to pull it up on the website. Is this it right here? That's it, exactly. So what Retool does is it integrates with tons of different um, backends, APIs, things like that. They've got a super simple Firebase integration. And then uh, essentially what you can do is you can create a dashboard for just about anything. And so I think at this point in time, I've created about 10 to 12 different dashboards. Uh, okay. I believe it's, uh, and essentially uh, what these, each dashboard has a, a, a different functions. For, so for example, um, we uh, kind of getting back to the idea of like in-app content that can be changed without having to update the code. Essentially what you do is you set up a configuration in your app where uh, you're pulling some featured content or some configured content. Uh, and then all you need is uh, a dashboard uh, on something like Retool. You could obviously build the dashboard from scratch yourself. Retool is just a, a nice way to make that process super quick and easy to build. Mm. And then... Um, and then basically you end up going to your retool dashboard to configure. Okay. Like, uh, in our example, the, the issue we found that we were having was that with sports betting, depending on what, uh, games are available, certain people are not, are going to be interested or are not going to be interested, um, in placing bets. And so if you show the, um, you know, if you default to just showing all the MLB odds, or even just a big list of odds at the beginning um, at any time you open the app. So for example, uh, Steve, if you tap like the, maybe the NFL tab there at the very yeah. top center of the screen, essentially we were just sort of defaulting to that. Um, I see. And we found very low engagement, about 10% of people were creating bets per session. And so what we theorized was that, okay, NFL games, for example, they're only on a few nights a week. Yeah. The rest of the nights of the week, there are other sports that are on. And so if we can kind of show people, hey, what is the right content for today? Um, show people, you know, what games are upcoming? What are the, um, you know, what are the different features of our app? And be able to kind of change that dynamically based on um, what's going on today. Because obviously with a, a betting app, there's uh, the sort of content within your app is changing on a day-by-day -day basis. 
Um, mm-hmm. We kind of theorized that that we'd get a lot more engagement. And that's essentially what happened. And then we ended are up you going using... from ten to thirty x? Wow, nice. Or, or sorry, sorry, 10% ten percent to thirty percent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Are you using Retool to show the different types of content? Like, how is it working from a technical perspective? Yeah. Um, so uh, basically in Retool, um, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll give you an example. So for uh, this top uh, this top piece of content on that, that homepage right there that you see where you see the girl with the phone and now the guy yes, with the yep. phone and the money. Um, uh, or, or No, no, no. If you go, yeah, yeah. Uh, so go home. hit home at the top left and then scroll it to the is. very top. Tons, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that content, essentially what we can do is we go in, we upload, we can upload an image or use any image we've previously used. And then okay. we can decide what that sort of title, if you scroll up, you can actually see what the title, there's a title at the top of each of those. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Oh yeah, my bad. You can configure that title, the subtitle, and then you can also configure where in the app it links to when someone taps on it, as well as what parameters, um, within the app uh, need to exist um, in order to show or not show this piece of content. So for example, we wanna be able to schedule, let's say uh, the Super Bowl is tomorrow is today and right. we've got some content related to the Super Bowl. Well, once the Super Bowl starts, we don't wanna show that content. Once there are no more odds available in the app on the Super Bowl, uh, we don't have to go back, wanna have to go back at exactly that time and, and unschedule it. So there's also configuration set up in there so that you know, it's as hands off as possible. I think the overall goal with creating dynamic content in an app is to uh, make it so that it's as set and forget as possible, yet still yeah. provides a dynamic experience to your users. So are you able, like, how's it connect when, with Firebase then? Yeah. And so um, Firebase is our backend. We use Firebase for our database. And so the actual uh, configurations are saved um, to our database. Retool is essentially a program that lets you put together a UI, uh, sort of like an admin dashboard type UI and connect it to your database super quickly and easily. Um, but Retool isn't actually saving those configurations. Those configurations are being saved to our Firebase database. And then the second thing that we used Firebase uh, for related to this was A-B testing. Um, you can configure uh, Firebase. It's one of the reasons why... Um, and I actually used to, I used to work for Amazon, and I love their AWS. Uh, all the they've got some like incredible products at AWS, but I don't use AWS Amplify. I decided to go with Firebase instead, and the reason being, uh, primary reason for me was Firebase has a very robust A/B testing tool where you can, um, you know, show half of your users uh, one thing and then show half of your users the other thing. So in our case, we could show half of our users. Uh, an app where it still defaulted to just showing them a list of odds when they opened the app of our, maybe our best guess of what sport to show them. And then another where we showed them this dynamic content. Um, and that way we could actually measure um, very specifically uh, what the impact of that would be. Love it. Love it. Okay. Let's say hello to some few people. Rudy's here. Celtic Whispers. Adrian, how's it going? Joe's here. Joe's loving all this. William a so- Good stuff there. Subgro is here. Patrick, what's happening, brother? And then Simon says, <laughs> hey, everyone. <laughs> Yay, William. And then Bart, good stuff, Bart. Rassi, Alex. Cool. And then YA asks, hi, Steve, what is a good budget to spend on Apple search ads for a new social app? So depending on type of social app, YA, I would say let's start with the least... I mean, you can get away with a few hundred, so it depends on your budget, but a few hundred is good enough to start seeing some traction. And then, you know, ultimately a thousand is a good enough because you want statistically relevant enough for you to do that. So what I would say is when you're setting up the campaign, the one mistake that most people, and this is a client just asked me, like, why did you set your campaign budget as like $50,000? So that doesn't matter, right? The thing, the way to cap your budget is the daily spend. And if you just wanted to run a $500 test, you can just put $500 campaign budget and have no daily budget. So there's a couple of ways you can set it up. But if you want to see like, hey, I'm willing to spend $500, let's spend, let's say $20 a day or something like that. And then cap, you can have a really high overall budget. So that's a way to do it if you're going to continue doing Apple search ads. Anything you want to add on that, William? 
Uh, no, th- I mean, that sounds about right. It probably also depends on the niche you're in. Um, at least through my experience being in the, the gambling niche, it's so expensive to compete for most of the, the relevant keywords. So we end up just keeping our budget um, relatively low and going for the very few keywords we think are relevant um, yet aren't bid up super high. Yeah, and I, I just did an interview with an indie developer where it's a husband and wife team. It's going to be coming up in a month or now. But like yesterday, we she really talked about like using Apple search ads to get the app going. And so it is a great platform. I am, I'm bullish on it. I talked to a few people who are not so bullish client of mine yesterday. She wasn't so bullish on it, but I'm actually pretty bullish on it because we've seen some really good results on it. So I think it's a great place to start. But why you got to be careful because it depends on the type of social app. Like some social apps, people aren't searching for anything, right? Like dating, for example, there's more vo- traffic volume for Tinder, Bumble, all the big guys, ex- and not as much for dating. So, all right. Uh, okay, cool. I think we're good. Hey, William, one thing I would, do want to discuss, because you brought it up with the A-B testing stuff, give us some of the ones that did not work out so well, and then we'll get into some of the ones that did work out well. Yeah. Um. So if you want to bring up the app, I can kind of... Uh navigate you through it and show you kind of a few examples. Yeah, um, let's do it. So, okay. So uh, maybe if, if you go to the balances in the bottom right, uh, and then let's go ahead and log out and relaunch. That way you can kind of see um, some, there were a lot that did not work out um, related to uh, kind of the new user experience. So I love you, this. Um, I didn't even notice this. Yeah, that's actually one that recently won. So we- okay. Uh, users would sort of, um, they'd get past our initial user intro. When you first open the app, you'll get a kind of like slider three page thing. That's like, mm-hmm. you know, an overview of our features. And then they just got, um, uh, shown, you know, a, a basic just login page. And so we wanted to add something dynamic to it to, to say, Hey, we've got really interesting content that's relevant right now. So we decided to create that little carousel that just shows, it just grabs all of the the kind of upcoming games and events that you can bet on through the app, um, and and that was actually a huge winner, luckily. Um, nice. And so some things that were losers. So if you m- maybe just start the the process of registering for an account, um, okay. you have just an extra email or something like that to use. Oh, I'll have to probably do that, huh? Because I'm already signed in. Okay. So you want me to just register with a different one? Yeah, 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 exactly. You can even use like a fake email or something. No, oh, there's a <laughs> trick here. Oh, you had the plus. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know that trick. That's a good one. And so, so anyways, um, let me basically go. Ahead. Yeah, like. Just starting, I, I can kind of get going on some of our uh, some of the tests that that didn't do well. Is we kind of theorized that okay, a lot of the different text that we put in the app when we developed the app, the idea was hey, let's just throw a piece of text that seems relevant. So we created configurations around every single text, and so for example, that ready to play right there, and then the button text, view games and odds. We ran uh, virtually all the different text in the app uh, we we ran A-B testing on. And what we oh, found really? was that all of those tests were at best like a tiny bit over flat. Um, it, <laughs> it definitely made me realize that when you run an A-B test, um, really, especially when your app is relatively small, it does not make sense to go and test all of the little details. Feel free to just make decisions uh, and decide what sort of text, what sort of titling, what sort of messaging would make the most sense for your users and then move on and don't rethink those decisions. Because un- uh, unless you have, you know, hundreds of thousands of active users every month, then you're, you know, changing a title uh, even at somewhere like the, the, the new user authentication and registration process where you'd think, hey, something like a title uh, or, or a call to action button might have a big impact. It really just doesn't. And uh, I'd say I probably wasted a lot of time creating a bunch of tests on things that really just turned out completely flat. Muted. What were some of the most surprising tests that you ran? 
Yeah. Um, let's see. So I would say one of the most surprising ones is I remember I remember watching a, a video from you, Steve, a while back about the sort of double opt-in on push notification permissions. Yeah. This and is gonna be so, a good video. Yeah, yeah. So basically, you know, the idea here is that rather than just asking a user for push notification permission. Hey, hold on, hold on, William. Let's do this. Let's do this, William. Um, Let me Okay. Let me try something here. Let's let's engage the audience a little bit. All right, guys. All right. This is what Williams is talking about. We got this one. And you know, I've been talking about double opt-in as well here. Let me see if I can do side to side. And uh, do, 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 do. so let's see which test one. This one will be A, the left one. And then this one will be B, the right one. Can you guys see all this? Okay, cool. So this is single opt-in, meaning that it just pops up, right? Like sort of the Apple default. And then this is the the double opt-in that I've been saying. So let's give it a little bit of time. Which one do you guys think? Put A if you think it's this one on the left and then put B if you think this one is on the right. And let's see what the audience says here. Okay. And then as we wait for them, Joe says, Will, the Spalding logo on the basketball is throwing me off for some reason. Almost seems like a Spalding affiliated app. Any chance you can swap the vote for generic? Let's see what he's talking about. Oh, that's here. a good idea. Even... Yeah, I kind of have it blurred a bit, but you can make out the the name there. That was one of the first assets I ever added to the app. Which one? It was it, 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 one? It's, it's in the page when you're logged out. You'd have to log out. And then oh, you know, got it. Let's take a look real quick while we're here. We're giving yeah, I people. I should update that. It's a great call out. See, between here? sign in and register. Near oh, the got it. Okay. The we'll go back on it. Okay. We got some answers. All right. Anybody else want to come on? Partake. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So we got Patrick who's like B, Rassi, B. Okay. William, go ahead. Which test one? The winner was A. Bing. Pretty surprising, right? Right. It is. I wouldn't have, and you know what? I back, I'll back that up. I've actually brought this up. That's why I love doing this. I, I asked other people and they said the same thing. Like a is actually the winner. So my bad, I was wrong. <laughs> and so this is going to be a future video, but you guys got spoiler alert right here for following. But yeah, Hey, just asking for the default. And I've talked to a couple of people who backed up your, backed up your test too. So it's, it's not just you. Yeah. And, and po possibly something that on a case-by-case -case basis, maybe yeah. certain types of apps, um, it might be better to have the double opt-in. But yeah, we just found it was overwhelming that just showing people this would get far more people to to allow notifications. Crazy. Now, yeah, we got it. Sorry, go ahead, William. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I, I was going to say the one advantage you do get with B that's, uh, uh, that even when I factored that data in, A was still a winner. Was that if they if they x out of that they say no, I have not used up my my ask with Apple, and so at a later time I can just show them a I can still show them if I just show a off the bat and they don't allow then I can't show that dialogue again. All I can do is show something like B with um with that button, and when they hit the enable notifications button, then what I have to do is I have to link them to the settings app on their iPhone yeah. and then get them to go and flag it. So yeah, that's the hard part, but yep. yeah, that's crazy. I like it. Okay. William, you let's take a look at the, the audience's app. You ready for it? Yeah. Before we do, you have some dad jokes ready to go. You know, in, in terms of dad jokes, I, I, I got, I love dad jokes, but I don't have any kids. So that kind of makes me a faux pas. Okay. But do you have any jokes? For a battle? That was the joke. <laughs> oh, oh, my bad. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. You should have <laughs> more of a <laughs> faux pas. Wait, wait. Oh, got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. A fake dad kind of. There you go. Faux pas. My bad. <laughs> I stepped on that one. All right. That's William's joke. <laughs> he just got me right off the bat. <laughs> but caught me by surprise. Uh, all right. So I got one. So that's Williams. I love that. The okay, you know, not safe for work always sends the win. This one again, guys. If you thought William won, if you liked his joke, put W, put S. If you think you like mine better, all right, William, why can't you hear rabbits making love? Why, why can't you hear rabbits making love? Because they have cotton balls. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> all right, let's see. Joe asked some stuff. All right, let's take a look at people's apps. And if you guys want to get your app audited live on YouTube, go check out appmasters.com slash 
audit at masters.com slash audit. And I think it's working now. I know people have said it doesn't work, but if you go just go to appmasters.com, there's a link for the audit as well. Okay, so we got the first app from Sumit Kumar. Sumit Kumar, and he wants help on the revenue and UI design. Okay, so let's do let's take a look at the app, and I will pull that up as well. Anything you want to add here, William? That you're seeing that maybe you want to talk about? Um off the bat, I think the use of color is great. It's nice having uh, a lot of color, but um, making sure, you know, with the, the GIF um, part of the app, there's already so much color. So you probably need to do a lot to be able to emphasize. You're trying to emphasize that text there in the, in the logo. Yeah. Um, probably want to make that stand out even more, possibly brighter colors there. Uh, the use of the background makes sense. Which background, right? Oh, the white background? Uh, the, the background below uh, GIF, right? Kind of uh, behind where it says GIF at the bottom. Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah. I like that. One thing that I noticed too that other people have said to me that having words in here tend to convert better in your app icon. So having particular words that are relevant to your app that people might be searching on actually has increased the conversions and the downloads. So I think one of the first tests I would be especially on Android, one of the first things I would be testing is the icon versus like screenshots or anything else, just because Android, you don't, on the search results, you don't see the screenshots until later on. Whereas Google, whereas iOS, you do see the icons too. I mean, I'm sorry, the screenshots. Okay, let's take a look at the app. And then I've got this pulled up as well. I know it's pretty crappy the way I have to show off my Android phone. Okay, here, let's take a look. Whoops. Easy. So the first thing is this, kind of like the A-B test that you ran, William, with the push notifications. This is very similar. So what I would say is to me is have this pricing page. Like we've seen it time and time and again that having the pricing page during the welcome flow or the onboarding sequence actually helps double the conversions, increases your revenues, and kind of just being like brute force, in your face, buy from me type of thing does really work. And so I would have, I would try to put that in here as well. And then we're gonna do a witch test one on this pricing page that's gonna, I already recorded, it's gonna come out in a couple of weeks. So that's coming out, but that's what I would do. I think so far, so good. I don't have a lot of, I think the buy is kind of small from the UI perspective. Like you can make it bigger and you could probably put it right here a little bit or maybe even go pro somewhere underneath this because you do want to get eventually people to buy. But let's see, face swap, let's see. I don't have any photos on here though. Let's see if I do. Select the face. I did like that there was a select a face default and I didn't have to pick my own. A good way to let people sort of test out the app. Yeah. What do you think about an ad showing up right now? Yeah, maybe a little too soon. Yeah, I think so too, but who knows, you know, this brute force stuff that comes out. All right. All right. That's cool. So I can save this, save to my gallery more photos on this <laughs> Android phone. Another ad. See, I don't know. I feel like an ad here is fine, right? Like I finished, it's done. Mm -hmm. The other ad, I don't think I mind it as much, but I think it's worth A-B testing too. Anybody else have comments? At least, at least for that first session for a given user, you know, a lot of data kind of shows that that very first time a user ever uses your app is by far the most important. Yeah, uh, to make a good impression to try to retain that user. And so maybe if there was just some sort of logic in there that said, hey, if it's the, you know, if they just created an account or they open the app, this is their first open of the app, then let's, you know, at least reduce the the ads um, so that maybe we can actually retain this user and then later we can show them ads over a, a longer period of time. Right. Okay, this is the graphic that I just created too. But I think like it's, I don't know what I get with the pro 
to is it maybe just removing the ads but i think after i'm done creating a gif it'd be interesting to show the pro version because right now it looks like i can do a lot no watermark no coin restriction okay so he's i guess there's virtual currency for every time but i don't know how much i have either that's all right we got some feedback from the audience as well do 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 Joe says, crazy keyword stuffing with GIF. Is that really going to go against you? I know Google, I've seen some crazy stuff happening on Google. So if anybody in the audience has seen Google, then let me know too. And then I get decision fatigue when I'm looking at the main screen. There are too many options. Agreed. Agreed. I don't mind it as much, but there's a lot of options. He says, I highly recommend, Joe says, I highly recommend implementing animations into your UI, tie it to with the concept of your app. Rassi says the ad showing reface is a competitor. Maybe you should filter out your ads. Then Joe agree with Rassi. Okay, cool. Yeah, I thought so too. I thought it was a, a comp because the name reface, I was like, is this just a feature or is this an ad? I had no idea what the difference was between the two. Anything else, anything else you want to add onto this? Um, yeah, I, I, I really like that idea about adding at animations. I think, you know, a GIF centric app is, is going to be something that, you know, tied to videos and looping like animations really would work, uh, work wonders on an app like this, I think, and making it look more refined, more professional, and just sort of like something that you'd want to keep downloaded on your phone for a long time. Yeah. And if it's a, cause creator editor. Yeah, I think he's going after the the maker piece of it. Oh, these screenshots are nasty, but maybe not as important on Android. But if you let's see how many downloads he's got, hundred thousand, so pretty decent. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I think it'd be interesting. I think it, assume it, reach out to us and let me know whether you've tested showing ads or not showing ads, because I think that would be an interesting case study to share with the rest of the audience if it worked out or not. All right, cool. All right, William, let's get into some other topics that I want to get. Oh, we've got a question here that I've been keeping out. Faisal asks, I've been a digital marketing freelancer for two years, work with many niche, now going to stick on only app marketing. What's your advice to someone who wants to start an app marketing agency? I say create content. That's what I did. I mean, I'll just show you my playbook, right? Just create content. And it's a it's not a win quick type of strategy. It's a long-term strategy because you're not going to see any benefits to any content creation to like maybe six, down, six, six months down the road, right? Or at least three months down the road. So I say create content, create valuable content, and then help people out. And that's what I did. Oh, one little hack that I did as well, Faisal, is there's a website called clarity.fm. So every phone call that I got on, if you want to build social proof, so here's the easiest way to build social proof. This is my hack. So when I, in the beginning, I was, when I, people wanted to get on the phone, I was helping them for free. I would just send them this clarity.fm link, but there's a VIP link within the settings that gives them a free call. And I would just use that. And that way they can schedule the call. And they're like, I've never even heard of clarity. I'm like, that's fine. But that's how I was able to build some social proof, get a lot of reviews on here. And then obviously I can now charge a boatload per minute for it. But that really helped out in the very start because then Clarity does a great job of asking for reviews after the phone call. And then here you can get some amazing reviews too. So if you look, if you scroll all the back on my reviews back in 2014, 15, 13, when I was doing the strategy, you see a lot of those reviews come in and then, you know, like you start ranking really well for if somebody's looking for app marketing, for example, let's see if this works though. What happened to my SEO? Jeez. Okay. Well, I was ranking pretty high for for that. That's a bummer. I know. <laughs> I'm like, it was number two, but not anymore. Something happened. All right. But that that's that's the way to do it. Okay. You're changing the algorithms on you. I know. Well, luckily, I don't realize I don't need it anymore. Okay, let's see who won the joke. We're tied. Anybody else want to vote? Come on, break the tie. Subgrow said Steve. Joe said Will. William. So let me know what happened there. All right, William. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about was 
the sweepstakes program. Talk to me about yeah. what you're doing there. Yeah. So, um, obviously licensing and regulation is a really tough part, um, operating in the, in the sports betting space. And, uh, the way it sort of works right now uh, in the U S at least is that sports betting can be legalized on a state by state basis. And then if you want to facilitate real money, sports betting, you've got to get a very expensive and difficult to get operators license in each individual state that you want to operate in. And so, Obviously, uh, facilitating real money, sports betting, not really an option for a small company like ours. Uh, but we wanted to, you know, add a little bit more to our platform, add a system where, hey, like people can with these bets that they place. Yeah, yeah they can track their bets with their friends. Um, we also have like a betting pools group play thing. But we wanted sort of like some sort of way where people could start, sort of win prizes and at least somewhat simulate the the feel of, of sports betting um, without having to, to deal with those kind of legal aspects. And so what we came up with was essentially a system where uh, by using the app, by inviting friends to the app, using the app on a daily basis, you earn an in-app currency that we call tickets. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you can place bets with these tickets uh, to earn more. And although it wouldn't be uh, allowed for us to allow people to then take those tickets and exchange them for, for cash, what we can do is we can allow people to take those tickets and then submit them to weekly sweepstakes drawings where, you know, the more tickets you submit, the better of a chance you have of winning an actual cash prize. Um, and so that's been uh, actually very successful. A lot of our most active or the majority of our most active users that use the app every day um, are folks that that are big into the sweepstakes uh, portion of the app. Um, the the difficult uh, part of it is a there's obviously legal implications there, so you have to either have uh, what we opted to do was consult with a lawyer and then write the terms ourselves, a lot cheaper of an option, and I think we got you know got it done pretty well. Um, rather than having a lawyer essentially do all the work, outline, hey, you need to do this, that, and that, and then actually write your terms for you, a lot more expensive. Um, so, uh, you know, it's obviously, um, it, it definitely creates some other weird factors within the app. So for example, when by placing bets with this um, ticket system, you know, however many tickets you have, determines how good of a chance you have at, at winning some real cash prizes. And so mm -hmm. people try, well, you know, with a system like that, people will try to abuse it. And so um, before we added this, you know, we never really had many issues with, um, you know, things getting out of whack in the app or, you know, certain of our um, triggers, you know, uh, we've got, a, I've, I've got a lot of sort of, you know, when certain crashes happen, or when certain, you know, parameters on user accounts get out of, you know, past a certain level that doesn't, shouldn't be right. Um, I get notified and I can go and look into it. And once we implemented the sweepstakes stuff, that happened all the time because people would, you know, go into airplane mode and try to do this, then go out of airplane, you know, that they, they tried a million different things to try to get as many of these tickets as they can to win prizes. So, uh, you know, adding something where there is like a real money or a real world benefit or prize to an app is an awesome way to not only acquire new users, but also to retain users. Um, but it comes with plenty of baggage, both on the legal side and then on on the app maintenance side. And you got to kind of be ready for that. Joe says, have you ever tried affiliate signups with sports books like DraftKings, FanDuel or BetBGM? Oh yeah, absolutely. We actually uh, just signed a an affiliate agreement with um, uh, Unibet uh, the other day. They it, it's a little tricky there because you actually also need licensing to do that. It's a much easier license to get, but it's licensing nonetheless, and you've got to go to each state and fill out their forms and get a background check done on you and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so yeah, there's there's definitely. Uh, other ways to monetize outside of something like like that, but um, uh, with affiliates being actually a very lucrative one, especially in the sports betting space. Yeah, totally. And I had a friend who, you know, solely relied on affiliate deals to for his app, and that's how they were making they were making really good revenue. Okay, is my name Moyo Moyo? Okay, 
or Moyo, have you tried using streaks to drive retention? That's a great, that's actually the next big feature we're working on actually in progress right now. So essentially uh, creating a system where we found that while there's a lot of people using the app to sort of bet with their friends, uh, there's also a ton of people using the app to just bet solo really for fun, sometimes using the the tickets thing to win prizes, but sometimes not even that, just betting with what we call the house, which is purely just betting for fun. Yeah, that's and what I did. right here, go yeah, giant. Exactly. That's what you just did. And so, you know, really what, um, you know, that's not exactly what we built the app for, but it's obviously great data on what our customers actually want. And so, what we're building right now is essentially a system of streaks. Um, uh, achievements and ranked play and, you know, some sort of combination of those. We're still kind of like outlining exactly what that would look like. And if any of you have any opinions on our ideas, you know, feel free to, to let me know. Lo always love feedback on something like that. Uh, but yeah, um, essentially, I think what we're looking to do is start matching people up with other betters, tracking their streaks, tracking their um, uh, creating achievements. Hey, win three bets in a row on NFL games, win three over under bets in a row, stuff like mm -hmm. that. And then based on that, they'll climb a leaderboard and, and earn prizes from that, uh, you know, things like that as well. So it's just more fun betting, right? It's not like, Hey, a sports book betting type of thing. Exactly. The idea is like, you know, Hey, you can improve your sports betting clout and maybe you can also win some prizes, but you don't yeah. really actually have to risk anything. And so it's sort of, Less risk, maybe less reward, but still more of a social reward to uh, to winning your bets. Got it. Okay. Got a next app. It's going to take a look at Jonathan's app. So thank you, Patrick, for voting. William, you're down 1-0, okay? You want to go next? <laughs> okay, don't sneak up on me this time. You want to right. do the joke or you want me to go All first? Right. Uh, you know what? How about you go first this time? I'll go first. I'll go first. Telling you, not safe for work always wins. All right. Mm. All right. I got this one. What did the digital clock say to the grandfather clock? Look, grandpa, no hands. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, man. All right. Uh, so at first, I thought my chiropractor wasn't any good, but now I stand corrected. <laughs> I like it. Back jokes. <laughs> All right, guys, come on. Put it in the comments, please. I know. I'll get to your questions if you vote. How about that? <laughs> Go vote is my name, Moyo. Moyo. Joe, give me a vote, too. There's a lot on the line. William and I are playing for beers, okay? All right, William. Jonathan asks, he wants more ASO help. And so I'll kick it off to AO, ASO and UX. Kick it off to you from an ASO perspective. Do you have any comments? Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, I'm trying to count exactly the number of characters in your title and subtitle, but it looks like you're missing a little bit of room. You can probably squeeze a few more, uh, characters in there. Um, the, uh, text above your screenshots, I'd make that much larger. And then I'd also add a bit of a background to those screenshots. Even if they're, you know, sometimes I actually found in some of my testing that having not just a, a plain color background, but a background with a little bit of, you know, patterning and kind of, you know, maybe what? squiggly line, kind of like that right there on the website um, where there's that sort of stuff. like that purple bluish where there's like, it's not just like a, a single color. That's yeah. actually one of the old versions that we're currently testing. Um, mm. But on Android, we've got some of the kind of different stuff. Um but yeah, making, just making that text as, as big as possible. Every time I've made the text on my app screenshots larger, uh, the, that test is one. So strangely enough. So, you know, I think, uh, just really getting in their face about whatever it is that you're trying to have, trying to kind of like, uh, display about the app. Obviously there's, you know, you've talked about this time and time again, Steve, the social proof featured on, you know, this site, wherever you can find and if there aren't any sites that have featured you, just hit up, you know, spend a day and just reach out to, you know, find, build a list of journalists or, or tech, you know, app sources, um, look up other, you know, and just like reach out. I'm sure you can get a, at least a couple of people to talk about your app. Yeah. Um, the, were you just A-B testing on Android? 
Uh, yes, right now we're essentially the way we do it is we A-B test using the Android in-app experiments tool. Mm -hmm. And then on iOS, we essentially just have to use, all right, put this version out, look at how um, the the conversion rates change, then put this version out, see how the conversion rates change from there. You know, yeah. not as perfect. And when you're talking about conversions, they like downloads to product views, downloads to impressions. Is that what you're going exactly. off? Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Got it. What's this O right here? Yeah, uh, the idea is you can bet on sports with zero juice. That's our kind of oh, latest, okay. uh, title test. Got it. Bet got on it. sports is a bit, is a really nice uh, keyword because sports related, um, betting related, but it's way less competitive than sports betting or sports book. Yeah, good good to know. <laughs> William, <laughs> giving too much information. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Jonathan, I mean, there's a the the basic. Obviously, one is the Spanish Mexico one. So put English keywords here, have a different title, have a different subtitle, all in English really helps your US optimization. The other thing I noticed too is you have, have vo logo designer, which if when I did this, so I just put your app under search ad recommendations right now. And it's because I have this. Ah, how do I get rid of this thing on the left? Anyways, if you look at the, I don't know if you guys can see this, but if you look at the volume, it's going to be logo maker. That's number one. And then logo creator. And then we can even logo design possibly, but logo designer is very low. Logo maker 18. So when you think about search score, logo maker has almost what four, three times as much traffic as logo designer. And I know you have it down here, but you want to definitely have it in the title somewhere. And then probably the other, instead of illustrator, you probably want creator. Illustrator is probably, you know, Adobe, right? Like I'm sure Adobe shows up when I click on illustrator. So app follow, I love that, I love that tool when I'm trying to figure out keyword research, this is the best way of doing it. It's not, now it fails. Anyways, you can put any app really. And then what I would normally do just to re harp on this again, if you guys put logo maker in here, see what shows up. These are all possible keywords that you can go after as well. Cause they're auto filled by Apple and then my internet's slow. But then what I would look at is the number one search result, do some keyword research and then the one that sort of sticks out, do some keyword research on them. So the one with the lowest reviews that's showing up in the top 10, do some keyword result research just by tapping on the search result here. Come on, have follow. It's probably just my internet, but cool. All right, while that loads, I will pull up the app. Let's do that real quick and give them some UX comment. How are we on time? Okay. Oh, okay. I got some thoughts on this, but I'm going to say, uh, I don't know which, if I should save it because it's a new witch test one thing. The um, You want to not pop this up right away. This shouldn't be the first time user experience like this. You don't want to pop this up. You want to tell me what the app is all about first before you pop this up. And we have data to back this up. It's going to be a future witch test one, but spoiler alert, you guys already know. I like the way that he's mixing the three day free trial versus the seven day free trials. I love that part, but I think this is too aggressive. You want to lead me into it again, kind of talk about what you said in the screenshots, you know, flirt with me a bit and then ask for, for my number. All right, cool. Let's get out of this. William, you see anything you want to? Talk about? Yeah. Um, one thing that, that might be worth testing on that very first page was um, uh, that sort of continue button if you if they don't want uh, to, yeah, to, to go with uh, one of those trials. I've seen a lot of apps these days that, a lot of large scale apps especially, that will make that continue. It's not a very obvious that it's a button and it's a bit smaller. You know, it's... Uh, it, uh, obviously a move that clearly works pretty well if a lot of these larger apps are are implementing it. So it's probably worth a test for you to just sort of try to dissuade them from hitting continue by not making it big and blue. Well, continue um, actually is getting me to pay. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe you had an option where once you it's, tap it's, on it. You're probably thinking that continue is to use the app and that's probably why 
Jonathan yep. has continue, but it's this little X up top that is I for see. me to get it. I see. There. I mm -hmm. see. Okay. That makes actual that, that that's actually kind of in line with my feedback then. Kind of, you yeah. know, making it possible for them to X out of this, but a little bit more difficult. Um yeah. uh and then uh having just all the the check marks there, if there's maybe a, a way I love how you have the 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 animation in the background, but there might mm -hmm. be just a slightly better way to style that. Maybe even using a different font in the app. Um, you know, if it is a design-based app, making sure your app's uh design is sort of uh well thought out is probably is, you know, because your target audience is probably gonna have a very high um, you know, a high bar when it comes to, to UX and UI design. And so just making sure that kind of every aspect of the design is kind of well thought out, sleek and everything like that. Especially if it's like vector, because, you know, not a lot of people know vector. All right. One thing that I'm missing here, Jonathan, too, is the upgrade to pro. Don't hide it on here, right? You're so aggressive by showing me on the very first open, but now you're like, mm. No. okay you said no but now i'm gonna go away you have so much white space here that you can definitely have upgraded pro somewhere on this because most of your conversions are going to come through that welcome flow that pricing page loading i felt like it was too soon you want to probably tee up a couple of different intro screens and then show the pricing page but after that the other second place is going to be that main screen overall i think the app looks pretty good oh that's pretty sick how come i can't make it stay Okay, so rectangle, that was cool. Stroke, can make it high, bigger, probably. Okay, there's a green stroke. Yeah, I like it. I love how the, the overall UI is just, you know, it's very simple, it doesn't, you know, it's not like when you get you know, get deep into Photoshop or something like that. And there's a million tools and you have no idea what they do. Like the, the product itself seems very easy to use to me. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. It's, it is. And then Joe says, agree with Will. You can mostly certainly keep the video at top 100% capacity and just the bullets to be below. That's true. I don't love the B. Yeah. I don't love the video. Joe says he doesn't like the video being the bullet points being right over the video. It makes it harder to read too. And I think, you know, like, honestly, like I want to see the end result versus the process. So I want to see cool logos in my eye versus just me having to do the work. Nobody wants to do the work. Everybody's freaking lazy, right? Like it, think about the fitness apps it's always before and after you don't see me doing like a thousand push-ups working out every day you know eating right you don't see that process you just see the final result and when people ask for success stories that's what they see but they don't see the years that it took to get to the success story so i think here show me the final result i actually don't like this at all i rather just see a lot of cool logos for my for me you know, maybe similar to sort of what we did with showing that carousel when people log in of all the the games that are that yep. are upcoming. Uh, maybe they could add something where it shows all the templates that they have. Yeah, like sort of those upcoming games there at the bottom, right there. You know, but something similar yep. to there where someone can just sort of swipe through and just see tons of examples of templates um, that they can you know create designs based around. Um, and then when they tap one, if it's a premium template or something like that, then it takes them right back to the, hey, sign up to use this template page. Because that way you can get someone maybe in love with one of these templates that, that you have for them. And, oh, this is exactly what I need. And then, oh, yeah, okay, I'm willing to pay three bucks to, to use right. this template. This is what I was looking for. I didn't want to get out of this, though. I'm going to go back to my main screen. I don't know. I'll go back to home. Oh, I guess here. I don't love that the hamburger menu changes from right to left. It was right when I'm in the project, or it's right on the homepage, but it's left on the other thing. I'd probably keep it consistent. Okay, that's just nit me nitpicking. Let's get into some of the questions we have. Will, do you prefer William or Will? 
Um, I go by William more often, but I go okay. by, you know, Will pretty good amount too. So, okay, cool. It doesn't matter people, to me much. <laughs> it's always the Michaels, you know, not, not <laughs> that Michael. care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people call me Steve-O, Stevie, Steve, Steven. I, I don't give a crap. All right. Yeah. It looks like you, you took a clean sweep on that one. Everybody voted. Oh, so man. thank you for voting. Now I will get to <laughs> your question. You. <laughs> Is my name Moyo? Oh, Moyo. Yes, sir. What's your best growth strategy. All right, Will, you're the guest. What's your best growth strategy? Um, I've found that a combination of um, ASO is definitely up there with um, uh, my my growth strategy, uh, best growth strategy. Every time I do a big refactor on my ASO, I see a decent bump. And then if I wait six months, especially on the Google end, I'm seeing a nice bump, um, but it usually takes me a good week at least to really do a good refactor. Uh, and then the second area that we've actually found to be useful is broadly what I'd call online posting. And it doesn't really mean like posting to our social media, but we just like, we'll post in blogs. For for example, we made a, a, uh, a betting predictor that goes and takes a bunch of stats and predicts who's going to cover the spread on certain games. And then we'll post our predictions on Reddit on different sports betting blogs and stuff like that. Uh, that's been really big for us. Sometimes we'll just kind of like straight up like, hey, check out our app, give us some feedback. Um, you know, we try not to do that too often because people will get really annoyed with you. But just using as many, you know, the comment, not even just, to, you know, posting in a blog itself, but even just in the comment section, posting in other people's posts, there's tons of opportunities just to sort of take a really scrappy approach online to promote your app, even if you're only promoting it indirectly. I love that. I love the indirect approach. I mean, it's sort of like creating content, right? Yeah. And that's what I, I said when starting the, the app marketing agency. So for Moyo, the other one that I have that I've been talking about a lot is called the app advice campaign. And that's where you have to give away a lot of free stuff. Anyways, search for it on YouTube. It's on my channel. It's, it's a campaign that, I mean, the video I created back in like 2015, and it's still one of the campaigns I use. So you have to give something away within the app. And depending on what your app does, if it's a subscription-based app, you have to do a 30-day free trial. And we usually do it on the annual plan. You can get coverage on that. All you have to do is email Tyler at App Advice. If you scroll down far enough, you'll see the, the name right here. And then, like, let's say for William, if you want to give away more tickets to new users, you can definitely do that and say, you know, this is worth five dollars or whatever so all new users get five free tickets which is normally worth five dollars and then you get coverage on that and that can drive thousands of downloads and the reason why i love it so much too is and william this is what i've been suggesting and back to jonathan's question is when you do a aso refresh run an app advice campaign shortly after because it's going to push those downloads and it's going to help those new word new keywords really take so especially on ios and then Joe says, Will, what about rewarded video ads to earn tickets? Something like, you know, have you tried that? I've not. That's a great idea. I'm definitely writing that down. I'm going to try that. I like it. Yeah, I like that. I tried you too. Pava says, hey, Steve, does ASO work for apps that are available for pre-order and pre-register? So Pava, they, it did a lot. And these days it's kind of like, eh, there's no downside for you doing it. Because if you find some good keywords that have lower difficulty, you can get a foothold on them. So I still don't think there's a downside to it. But at the same time, it used to work really, really well back when pre-order first came out. These days, it's kind of like meh type of thing. So, but again, no downside. So do it, but just curb your enthusiasm. <laughs> All right. Okay. Cool. Uh, great point. Okay. And Joe says, great point with the hamburger menu. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, William, we got one last joke. This is going to settle it all. So the winner, the loser will have to buy beers for the winner. You want to go first? You want to go second? I'll go first on this one. Okay. So yeah, it's uh, looking like it's uh, going to be raining today here. I'm here in Houston, Texas, and I might need like a rain jacket or something. I also got to be careful if it's raining cats and dogs, not to step on in a poodle. Poodle. <laughs> I like it. Okay. William, I quit my job as a personal trainer because the weights were too heavy. I just handed in my two-week notice. 
<laughs> all right, guys. Look, big stakes. You got to vote. All right. This is what this is why I do this every weekend and week out. If I don't get votes, I don't know. You know, it's my dad. All right, Tony. Tony is up. Let's take a look at Tony. Tony match life. So he, Tony needs help with ASO and monetization strategies. Looks like it's a dating app. If I'm gonna look at this, discover millions. Okay, <laughs> look, Tony, don't put millions if you only got a hundred downloads. All right, so that's one thing. Unless it's really true that you got a million, but I'm like a million, but you only got a hundred downloads. All right, let me see what that happens. Anything you want to start with, Will? Um, I'll, I'll let you start. Um, I, I, I think maybe the, the logo itself, you know, adding a bit more complexity. I've found that adding words and Android logos often works. That's at least worth a test to, you know, throw in a, a word like, I don't know, date or, well, you know, date yeah. now, or, you know, some sort of like word where someone's searching, they likely search that search term or something very similar to it. Yeah. Not agreed. necessarily a brand keyword. I mean, this is what we talked about with GIF too. Agreed. And you yep. look at it, everybody's using GIF. So it does work. I agree with you on that. The other thing I would say, especially because it's a dating app, is get very, the worst possible experience for a dating app is, I mean, you say millions, but you know, we can look into the app, is not finding anybody in your area. So what, I, and I've talked to a few dating apps out there. I was like, hey, what would you, well, how would you start if you're just getting going? And it looks like you're just getting going too is focus on a certain area. That's it. Like a city, just pick one city, dominate that city, and then start expanding. Look, Uber started with San Francisco, Airbnb, I think it was just Austin, but like there is precedent to where a big social media network, like Facebook, just Harvard, like they started with just one particular niche, really dominated that niche and then started branding out. So that's what I would recommend. And that's what other dating apps that I've talked to started saying the same thing, like, Hey, start very niche, start in a very geographic restricted area. And then your marketing becomes a lot easier in terms of ASO growth, everything else becomes a lot easier. All right, Tony. All right. Should we take the app? Man, I don't know. Eating at them all. Also on your screenshot, similar to the last app we looked at, it's making that text larger. will will certainly help. Um, yeah. And then, you know, test various orders, see, you know, Hey, is, you know, what's mo most compelling to your users? Uh, I, other good ways that, that I'll even test, for example, is I'll create Google ads um, with mm -hmm. a very small budget. And I'll take each of those text phrases that I, I want to put above my, or even just every idea I can think of, of a text phrase to go above my app store screenshots. And I'll make an ad for each one, very basic sort of ad. And then I'll, I'll look and see, okay, which one is getting a higher click-through rate? And based on that, those will kind of like help guide how I want to set up my, my A-B test within uh, Google Play. That's a great idea. I got to clip that. That's a great idea. I love that. Okay. I'm going to connect. Let me try to log in. I won't share my screen. It's tied right now. Vote on the joke, please. Thank you. It's tied. Come on, Patrick. Where were you now? Rassi? I don't see a vote from you. All right get into this let's get into this real quick <laughs> here's my excuse to my wife hey I, I, just for you know just look at apps that's why i'm on these dating apps <laughs> how do i change the year oh that sucks like it's so hard to change a year ah oh, this ui sucks come on tony all right i'm can i date if i was born in 2013 okay i gotta go 20 then i guess Look at how, how do I change the year? Okay, there, finally. Ooh, uh, yeah. That was pretty horrid. Yo, just show me the normal like year thing. Okay, there. It's gonna make me ask for a picture. All that stuff. Uh, it changes. Can it go without anything? Okay, upgrade. Let's see what the upgrade is. I like the heartbeat I there. It, I think a trial would be better. Yeah, it looks like it just charges right off the bat. I think, was it wrong? Let me look at this real quick. So it's saying it's only $8 a year, whereas this is saying $8 a month. 
So your pricing is probably off a little bit the way you set it up. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's start. Oh, okay. Great. One doctor. I was like, yo, why is this dude showing up? <laughs> okay. That's not good. That's probably what. Sure. I'll like you. I'm not going to hate on anybody. Okay. Come on. See, this is where that's the problem, right? You come to an app like this, you see all these junky photos and then you're out. And that's what you want to make sure you do. Cause this seems misleading. Discover millions of, again, when you get start in a certain city, you can say discover singles in Austin, in Houston, all that stuff. Really do that. All right, Patrick. Oh, we got a vote. Okay. Nobody else wants to vote. All right. All right, I think William, also looks before like... you before you try Sorry, to monetize or, or sort of get them to sign up, you know, trying to give them a little bit more, uh, you know, show them the value of the app a little bit more, show them, you know, maybe get them to like match with their first person or something like that. Maybe make that the goal when they first create their account rather than immediately going to, hey, pay us money. Uh, I think it, it, you'll you'll probably get a lot more conversions. And even if you don't, you know, get a lot more people actually, um, you know, paying for your service, you'll probably at least overall get a higher user base because there'll still be people that didn't necessarily pay, but hey, they had a better first experience in the app where you weren't, you didn't just immediately ask for money. You kind of like showed them the benefits of the app. Love it. Okay. Got some questions and then we'll get all with it. Rohit asks, hey, Steve, hey, William, I'll be releasing my casual gaming app in open beta in the Philippines. What do you think is the best launch strategy? with very little or no marketing budget. <laughs> what do you got, Lyle? Um, Okay, uh, little or no marketing budget. I mean, there's so many things you can do. Again, I kind of, as I was saying earlier, posting online places, just going, you know, do that sort of thought exercise. Like the people that are going to be using this type of app, what are they like? You know, look at your, maybe if you have a few people that initially um, start using your app once you launch, look at some of the demographics. If you got like Google Analytics set up with it, figure out kind of what your your customer base's interests are and then find out with people with those interests, where are they going to be online and then meet them there, post there, comment there, join the discussion and have the link to your app in your bio or something like that. Um, you know, those sort of scrappy methods are nice in that they don't cost anything. And in most cases, you're not really competing with like the bigger players when, you know, the larger casual games, they're so big that like, they're not doing this stuff. They're, they'd rather just go and pay for, um, for acquisition. And so that's why it costs so much to, to acquire users on, you know, Facebook ads or, or, or Google ads or stuff like that. Um, so, uh, so taking just sort of like the approach that, you know, these other game manufacturers, our game creators um, wouldn't take is is really the best move. Okay, Rassi's in line with what I'm thinking. If you got no budget, Rohit, posting on Reddit, there's a bunch of these Reddit subreddits where it's like play my game, share my game, blah, blah, blah. And even Facebook groups with indie app developers. So you want to search for indie app developers. And Rassi said posting on Reddit can really work. Got some extra installs from there. So if you're just an open beta, that's what I would do too. All right, guys, we need one more vote. We're currently tied. We got Will. We got... Steve, and then we got Steve and Will. So we're tied. All right, come on, break the tie. And then let's see. I think we're good on that end. We'll wait to see if there's any more questions. I think I'm covered here. The website, if you guys want to check out Will's app, is wagerlab.app, or just search for Wager Lab in your favorite app store, iOS, or Google Play. Will, is there anything I missed that you want to make sure we cover before we say goodbye? Um, I think we covered, uh, virtually everything I wanted to cover. Um, yeah, I think, uh, really, I, I, I know that one of the main things I wanted to kind of like tell people about that I have no affiliation with them was, uh, using retool is an awesome way to just sort of like create backends for your app, make it easier to do stuff. Um, so go check that out. It's like, you know, you need a small amount of an ability to code. Um, but it's just such an easier way to do so many things. And again, I'm not affiliated with them at all. I've just found it as a nice kind okay. of time saver that no one else seemed to be talking about. And then Subgrow said, are there any groups for testing social networking apps? It depends on social network, right? Like if you're looking for, again, start niche with any social networking app and that includes dating. The 
so if it's music, look for musical groups. If it's, I don't know. So it depends on your, your social network, the audience you're trying to target, but yeah, there's plenty of that. All right. Rohit says, thanks. That was good advice. You're welcome. Looks like we're tired. So we'll, we'll just split it. How about that? Right. We'll that go sounds in good. We'll the <laughs> All right. William, if the audience wants to connect with you in any other way, do you want to send them anywhere else besides wagerlab.app? Um, yeah. So you can go there to download the app. That's the website. It's got all the app download links. And then if you uh, want to contact me personally, my email is william at wagerlab.app. Awesome. Guys, we are doing more tests about this YouTube series about which test won. And so we're, if you guys got some A-B tests, hopefully screenshots, just like Will was able to present with us, send them my way, steve at appmasters.co or .com. It doesn't really matter. All the same place. But email me. I want to do more of this stuff and do more of this content creation around like different tests, different A-B tests too. Because sometimes it's counterintuitive like we found out today. Will, thank you so much for coming on doing this. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. This has been great. All right. It's fun Next talking week. about this stuff, you know, because that's really the way to learn so much of this is that, you know, there's no rhyme or reason to it. You just got to kind of use experience, leverage experience and talk to other people that have experience. Yes, totally agree. And then next week, we're going to have Darius Mora. He's going to be back. He is the CMO at Reflectly. If you guys haven't checked out that app, definitely do that. And we're going to talk all about app marketing and retention, monetization, all the things that he's he's an expert on this. We had him on a couple of times last year, but he's, I, I said, hey, come back on, man. Let's talk. So it's going to be a great episode with the CMO of Reflectly. So be here next Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific with... Yeah, <laughs> Darius Mora. What am I repeating myself? Thank you guys for coming. Have a great weekend. I will see you guys next week. Bye.